سالی و خیرات از سالی فرسیه را نمی‌دونیم لطفا سر خالو کسوان ماشاءالله جسکری که دست می‌دهد کاری دست کم ماشاءالله کسایی که چند بار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. ما كان على النبي من حرج في ما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبي وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا يا وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله اذكروا الله ذكرا 
كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله على کس مانگے کہاں جائے کسے کہیں تیرے بندوں کا تیرے سوا کون ہے سب کا داتا ہے تو سب کو دیتا ہے تو اور دنیا میں حاجت روا کون ہے کس سے مانگے کہاں جائیں کس سے کہیں اولیاء تیرے محتاج اے رب کل تیرے بندے ہیں سب انبیاء اور رسل ان کی عزت کا باعث ہے نسبت تیری ان کی پہچان تیرے سوا کون ہے کس سے مانگے کہاں جائیں کسے کہیں انبیاء اولیاء اہل بیت نبی تابعین و صحابہ پہ جب آ بنی تو گر کے سجدے میں سب نے یہی عرض کی تو نہیں ہے تو مشکل کشا کون ہے کس سے مانگیں کہاں جائیں کس سے کہیں یہ تو ہم کے دو اشار اور دو اشار انشاءاللہ نات کے انشاءاللہ پیش کر کے اجازت چاہوں گا ہوں وہ چودہ سو برس پہلے کا کس نے ہے سما دیکھا نہ ویسا کارواں دیکھا نہ میرے کارواں دیکھا نہ ویسا کارواں دیکھا نہ میرے کارواں دیکھا نبی تشریف فرما ہے صحابہ پاس بیٹھے ہیں نبی تشریف فرما ہے صحابہ پاس بیٹھے ہیں صحابہ پاس بیٹھے ہیں نہ باغ ایسا نہ پھول ایسے نہ ویسا باغ باں دیکھا اور عمر کے جنتی ہونے میں جسے شک ہو وہ ناری ہے عمر کے جنتی ہونے میں جسے شک ہو وہ ناری ہے 
وہ ناری ہے کہ خود آ کا نے جنت میں عمر کا ہے مکان دیکھا کہ خود آ کا نے جنت میں عمر کا ہے مکان دیکھا نبی نے جو بیٹیاں دی ہیں عثمان و حیدر کو عثمان و حیدر کو علاوہ ان کے اوروں پر نہ اتنا مہربان دیکھا وہ چودہ سو برس پہلے کا کس نے ہے سما سما دیکھا السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين صدق الله العظيم Respected ulama ikram, elders, brothers, mothers and sisters We are going through a challenging time and there's no doubt about it and the thing which will console us is that the time which is coming after this it will be worse Zubair ibn Adi rahimahullah ta'ala the hadith been narrated by Imam Bukhari rahmatullah Ali <coughs> under the chapter of Kitab al-Fitan trials and tribulations. So he says, he's a very great prominent tabi'i. He says, Atayna Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. We came to the prominent companion, Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Fashakawna ilayhi ma nalqa min al-hajjaj. We complain to him regarding what we are facing from the tyrant ruler, Hajjaj bin Yusuf Saqafi, who was the governor of Iraq at that time, who was nominated by Abdul Malik bin Marwan. So he was so notorious, so evil, so bad person that he killed many of the Sahaba Ikram and many of the Tabi'in. So people were fed up, people were so frightened about him. So they said, what is happening? We have not even finished the era of the Sahaba Ikram. The Sahaba Ikram era is still there and this is happening in the Muslim world. So. What's happening? Can you just explain to us? So what did Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu say? He said, Isbiru, be patient. Hatta talqaw rabbakum, until you meet your Lord. Then he said these words, فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ زَمَانٌ إِلَّا الَّذِي بَعْدَهُ شَرٌ مِّنُ That the time you're passing by now, this is much better, because the time which will come after this, it will be worse. سَمِعْتُهُ مِن نَبِيِّكُمْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ I've heard that directly from your beloved messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the point that we have to get today is it's not going to get better. So the question comes is what are we going to do? Are we going to just sit and be complacent and appease ourselves that we are doing okay, we are good Muslims and we don't need to do any kind of changes in our life? We need to keep this in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us in this world for a purpose. We'll go, we are going to go through these problems. 
أم حسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكاذبين. الله is not going to just keep us like as we said آمنا we believe and we're not going to be tested. The previous nation, the previous people, they were tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then distinguished between the right and the wrong. So each and every one of us, we are going through our own test, whether it's personal, whether it's local, whether it's national, whether it's international, every one of us, we're going through the challenges. It's not going to get better. يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ الزَّمَانِ أَصَّابِرُ فِيهِمْ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِذِ عَلَى الْجَمَرِ a time will come upon the people that a person who's persevering on the deen will be like a person who's holding hot cinder, embers on his hand. Another hadith the Prophet says, depression will be such that the Prophet takes a qasam oath. Don't look at this dunya. A person will be passing by a grave and he will desire that I wish I was the occupant of this grave. <coughs> and this is not going to be because he wants to meet Allah because the hadith says ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allah liqa. the person loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. No, no. But only reason is that he's going through these trials and tribulation and it's too much for him. Allah. We have Frequently people calling, just I had a sister calling yesterday, I don't want to live anymore, I just want to die, can I commit suicide? Allah. I had a phone call, a message actually, 3 o'clock in the morning saying that Mufti Sahib, I am going to commit suicide and please will you look after my children, enroll them in your madrasa and please perform my janaza. This is the kind of messages we are getting. This is the challenging time that we are facing. Satakunu fitna, samma bakma amia. Fitna will come. It will make a person deaf, dumb, and blind. Yusbihu musliman wa yumsi kafira. In the morning he'll be believer. In the evening he'll be disbeliever. Wa yumsi musliman wa yumsi kafira. And in the evening he'll be a believer. In the morning he'll be a disbeliever. Yabi'u dinahu bi'aradhi min al-dunya. He'll sell his deen for paltry things of this dunya. So iman is at the risk. It's the challenging time. Iman is in jeopardy. We need to understand that we wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. Each and every one of us, we need to make sure that we preserve our iman till our last breath. Say. Each and every one of us, how are we going to preserve this? The challenges. This 21st century is too much. We have, you know, technologically we might be progressing, but morally, spiritually we are retrogressing. Islam has the solution for all the problems, but we are not practicing on that. Like the imams have got onto the mimba and said, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is we got enough money to do the extension of the masjid. The bad news is the money is in your pockets. <laughs> we have the formula to rescue the world, but we are hoarding it. We got the theoretical side of it, the practical side is zero. So even the social media is one of the biggest fitna of this era, of this time. But subhanAllah, this same technology, we can use it for the right purpose. Albert Einstein, he said, I am fearing that time that when technology will overcome our social interaction, then if that happens, then it will create, uh, um, it will bring about fools. And this is what we are facing now. So this technology, subhanAllah, the Quran, in Surah Al-Nahl, in the opening chapter of Surah Al-Nahl, in the first ruku, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually mentions, وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرَكَبُوهَا وَزِينَ وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ Under this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about the mode of transport at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that khayl, the horses, wal-bigal, the mules, wal-hamir, the donkeys, these were used for mounting on to ride and to go from one point to the other point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the verse by saying, وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He will continuously create, those who understand Arabic, يَخْلُقُ إِثْهَيْلَ مُذَارَ At the present time, future time, he'll continuously create those things that you don't know. In other words, mode of transport. Under this, the scholars of the Sir mention, it actually spells out, it actually references to all the different mode of transport which will come until the Day of Judgment. The bus, coaches, the motor cars, 
the planes, everything is included in that. All our mobile phones, you know, uh, tab uh, the tablets that we have, iPods, iPads. So all these things are included in this. And Islam has given us, instructed us, guided us how we should be using this. The smartphones, the social media, it's like a double-edged sword. So we have advantages and disadvantages. So what are the advantages? Number one, the advantage is that through this, we can contact our loved ones, our parents. We're supposed to be contacting our parents. We're supposed to be contacting our relatives, our friends, keeping that contact. That's very virtuous, meritorious. But we don't do that. That social media was supposed to be used for the positive and the productive thing, beneficial thing, we're not doing it. So the, the benefits of it is if we use it properly, we should be using them to connect with our parents, connect with our siblings, connect with our relatives, connect with our friends, and also <coughs> connect with our teachers, our sheikh, our spiritual mentor, and get guidance from them. Number one benefit. Number two benefit, we can use it to listen to authentic scholars. So that's the benefit. We need to know who are the authentic scholars. Because this day and age is very hard to find the authentic scholars. And what's happened is the true scholars are leaving one after the other. Okay. This knowledge will not be just snatched away like this from the hearts of the people. But this knowledge will be lifted how? By the demise of the ulama hatta idha lam yubqi aliman until they will not remain a single alim ittakhadha nasu ru'usan juhala people will make the ignorant people scholars fa aftau bi ghayri ilmin fa dallu wa adallu they will issue verdict they will be misguided themselves they'll misguide others there's so many youtube celebrities they diy scholars we just make any tom dick and harry our YouTube, you know our uh, leader our role model and then we listen to them, Allahu Akbar. And we get misguided. That's why in Urdu they say, Nim Hakim Khatra Jan, Nim Mullah Khatra Iman. So we need to get the right kind of guide, spiritual mentor, teacher who can guide us. So the point I was saying here is that the benefit, we can utilize it for the right purpose. So these are the benefits. What are the Danger, the disadvantages. Number one, fitna fil aqaid. Even our aqidah, you know, you'll see so many clips where a person, for example, the clip says something, they show that it's an Islamic uh, program or something, and it is all against Islam, anti Islam. Why did the Prophet get married to Azza Aisha? She was only six years old. So, there's somebody who made the clip and then you will see so many Muslim commenting on that. Yes, because of this, I've left Islam. Nauzubillah. How could he do this? How could he do this? When you put that question, how could the Prophet do this? That's it. Your Iman is gone. You're questioning the beloved Prophet of what he did? It's a very sensitive topic to say these words. Why did he do this? How did he do this? That's it. That's the end of our Iman. So this is what's happening. Fitna fil aqaid. Aqidah. Many of the people. There was another, there was one clip where he spoke about wastashidu under this wastashidu shahidain min rijalikum. That, you know, Islam teaches us that two uh, women's witnesses equal to one man. So how is this? This ladies who are much more clever than the men. And subhanallah, indoctrinating the people. So under these comments, so many sisters made the comments, yes, that's not fair, that's, you know, sexist, that's why I'm leaving Islam. Allahu Akbar. So it's so dangerous that people are leaving the Iman. Fitna fil aqaid. Then we have fitna fil a'mal. The first fitna. Yasuddakum an dhikrillahi wa anisullah. Why was alcohol and gambling prohibited for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned ten reasons. Ya ayu al ladhina amanu inna wal khamr wal maysir wal ansab wal azlam rijsum min amal al-shaytan fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun inna ma yurid al-shaytan ay yuqi'a baynakum al-adawata wal baghda wal khamr wal maysir wa yasuddakum an dhikrillahi wa salat fa hal antum muntahun 10 reasons and what two of the main reason was that it stops you from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from salah and these two things are found on social media we are so stuck with it 
We will start at night time and we won't even realize that his Fajr time is here and we're still on social media. So it stops a person. That's the biggest fitna. Fitna fil a'mal that a person is being stopped from carrying out his faraiz obligation. I could remember some time ago there was this, I think it was European football and uh, UK, UK, uh, England were playing. It was a final or something. So basically what happened, I was in uh, Lanka, uh, Lancashire area. So many uh, places I went, what's this? How come you're out today? You're supposed to be watching football. <laughs> Sco- Do you know, so-called scholars are telling me this. Do you know, that's quite odd. Nobody's out today. I was shocked. I went into one particular house and I could hear, you know, the football game going, the TV on and everything. And so one person just came, just go and meet him quickly, then he can continue watching. <laughs> Sheikh is here from Bradford, just meet him and then you can go and watch, continue. Allahu Akbar. This indoctrination, this obsession. So people get so obsessed. Some time ago, I think it was World Cup and uh, UK, uh, England were playing uh, Argentina or Brazil or something. And it was Juma time. Quite a long time ago. So basically, Juma time, there was hardly anybody there in Juma. And after the Faras, those who came to Juma, they ran out so quickly. I said, where's everybody gone today? What's, uh, what's this, uh, which world are you living in? There's football going on. Don't you know World Cup football? I said, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> this is what's happening. So basically, fitna fil a'mal. This is stopping us from doing what we need to do. And the worst thing here is, another thing which fitna fil a'mal is pornography and nudity. So the fitna, the immorality, that shaitan, it ya'muru bil fahsha wal munkar, the shaitan, it promotes and it gets a person to go into lewdness and immorality. And this is what it is. On the social media, subhanallah, all these things, you know, in our madrasa days, if we heard somebody went to a cinema, it was Allahu Akbar, this one person went to a cinema. Every single one of us, we got worse things than the cinema here. You know, people had a TV at home. People are stuck for it. has got TV at home. Now we've got everything. Every room has a screen in the bedrooms and they've got their own smartphones and the iPods and the iPads and everything else as well. So this is what's happening. So basically, it's a double-edged sword. We can use it. The benefits are there. But the point here is all the scholars are unanimous that if you cannot control your smartphone, you cannot control your social media and you are falling into sin, you're going into all these things, and you can't use for the, for the advantages and the benefits, then we should not be using social media. So each and every one of us, if we want to use social media, there's few etiquettes. And I want you to listen to these etiquettes, these adabs. That if we can apply them myself, I'm addressing myself first, and I'm addressing yourself as well, sisters as well, brothers, everyone who's listening. We have to before, like for example, we got a smartphone whether it's iPhone, whether it's Samsung, whichever iPhone you have, or whichever, in other words, access to internet. So first thing we have to ask ourselves, number one, is what is our intention? The first adab, the first etiquette is our intention. <coughs> Actions are according to intentions. Why am I going to switch my mobile on for now? Am I going to phone my mother to find out how she is, or my father, or my brother or sister? Am I going to switch it on so I'm going to listen to my a teacher speaking, he's giving a lecture now. What is the purpose? So first thing is Because every single thing is, in, if our intention is good, if our intention is correct, is noble, go forward. Number one, always before we switch the mobile on, let us get our intention right. So you just shaitan overcomes, no, I'm going to watch something which is immoral, something which is uh, on Islamic, then no. Stop it there. Then and there, stop it. So, mashallah, first thing, our etiquette, our adab, we got our intention right. Number two, Bismillah rahman We start everything with Bismillah. Kullu amrin zibalim lam yabda bi Bismillah fahu akta. Every important matter, because now it's become important, you want to speak to your mother. That's very good. You listen to the lecture of your teacher. You know, son? Shaykh Yusuf Mutalasa rahmatullah alayhi. You know, so basically you want to hear some authentic scholar. No problem. Say Bismillah ar-Rahman and start it off. So number one is niyat, intention. Number two, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So you start it off, mashallah, the speech is coming, Sheikh Sudez is reciting, whatever. You got something which is beneficial, which will be rewarding, meritorious. 
The third etiquette is taqwa. Throughout, because something is going to pop up. Acha, mashallah. You just go somewhere else. So only, hey, I was listening to Sheikh Sudes. Where am I now? Inna lillahi chat room. Inna lillahi. What am I doing? <laughs> so straight away something goes wrong. So taqwa, fear of Allah. Throughout that 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to be listening to Sheikh Sudes or my spiritual mentor, Sheikh Yusuf Mutala I'm going to listen to, you know, a nasheed or qirat. So then, you know, you have to have that taqwa, the fear of Allah. Ittaqillah haithu ma kunta. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever you are. So you might be in the previous, in your own room, in your bedroom. Nobody else is there. So third thing is, the etiquette is having that taqwa. Having that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout the usage of your mobile phone, of that clip, the taqwa has to be there. Throughout. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, toba. So what has happened is, you had the right intention, you said Bismillah rahman rahim you had the fear, but suddenly you slipped. Suddenly you realize, Allahu Akbar, where have I gone? This is going to some site which is completely, you know, gaze or whatever, some evil site has come in. And now this is very easy. There's so much advertisement before, after, in the middle. So before they used to have in the middle, beginning, so you can just skip it. Now they have it in the middle as well. So you just suddenly, the ayat stops and then advertisement starts. So you know, so that spirituality, that emotion is completely goes. This, was the, this is what the reality is. This is dunya for us. Ala inna dunya hulwa tun khadira. Dunya is very hulwa from the word halwa. Dunya miti or sarsabs. This is dunya. So basically what we need to do is toba. So we slipped, immediately do toba atta ibn azzambi kamal la zambala. Come back to the first point again. Come on, no, no, astaghfirullah. I was listening to Shaykh Sudha, I'm going to continue. I was listening to my Shaykh, I'm going to continue listening to my Shaykh. So the fourth thing is toba. Atta ibn azzambi kamal la zambala. And the fifth is, mashallah, now at that half an hour I listened to my Shaykh throughout, mashallah, I had the right intention. I said, Bismillah rahman rahim Throughout, I didn't go to any other sites. And mashallah, you know, uh, there was a time I nearly slipped. I did Toba, Astaghfirullah, I read Istighfar. And now, half an hour gone, your mother's calling you. No, no, I'll listen to another Shaykh today's uh, recitation. I'll listen to my Shaykh, I'll go into that nasheed. No, no. Don't exceed the limits. The fifth etiquette is don't exceed the limits. So you might be thinking to yourself, Subhanallah, all night I'll just listen to Tilawat, I'll listen to Bayan one after the other, one nasheed after the other. No, no. You've got other things to do. You got other things to do. A lot of people think to themselves, no, I'm going to hear this scholar, then after this, this scholar, that scholar. It's okay, but how long are you going to do that? You have to have limits. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitab al-mawkuta. Everything, every salah time is fixed upon the believers. So what we need to do, my brother, my sister, is that we have to restrict our usage of our social media. On a daily basis, you, everyone will have, the smartphones will tell you how much you have used on your WhatsApp, on your Facebook, on the news, on the TikTok, on whatever, all the different kind of programs, it will tell you. All the apps, whichever you use, it will tell you how much you've used. So you, we need to review it. Like Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, what did he say? Hasibu anfusakum qabla antu hasibu. Do your accounts before your accounts are done. Wazinu qabla antu zanu. Do your wazan before the wazan. Ta'ahabu lil arud al akbari ala man la tukfa alayhi a'malukum. Be ready to present yourself upon that being that nothing is hidden. So each and every one of us, review astaghfirullah. I've used seven hours, eight hours on social media. Inna lillah. What's up that amount? Subhanallah. Facebook. No, no. Tomorrow I need to cut that. That's the way we need to go forward. So we need to make sure that we don't exceed the limits. We don't transgress the limits. We don't trespass the amount. So we have to have an amount that is within our scope, which doesn't infringe on the rights of others. I got my wife. I got my children. I need to fulfill their rights. Many of us were so busy, you know, we think to ourselves, Subhanallah, I'm doing the khidmat of deen, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And we don't have no time for our children. And another problem that we have is on social media, we think that every time somebody sends a message, it is our obligation to send it, to spread it. This is the biggest mistake that we do. Somebody sends it without even thinking, you just send it. That's why I always say, we need to make sure that before we send that message, we take it 
through the triple filter test. Triple filter test. I don't know if you heard this word, triple filter test. Triple meaning three. Filter. We have to filter it three times before we can pass it on. And if we filter everything, then there's no need to pass on any messages because by the time you do the filter, you realize that there's nothing to pass on. Because it's many of the things, there's no substance in it. There's no authenticity. So we have to make sure it's authentic. Number one, the filters. Let me just go through the filters. Number one, you got a message. Should I pass it or not? Number one, the filter is, is it true or not? See. The message which is there, is it true or not? Do you know the Quran paints the picture of the person who doesn't verify the information. He labels him as a fasik. Very dangerous. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in jaakum fasiq. Bina ba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahala. Fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum. So basically what do you say? In jaakum fasiq. If a fasiq comes to you with news fatabayyanu, then make sure that you sort that out. You verify, you confirm that information. You scrutinize it before you pass it on. So the first thing, the first filter is verify if it's true or not. Number one. Number two, even if it's true, you don't still spread it out. You know, oh, this person has been imprisoned. Okay, yeah, I'll just spread. It's true, but is it good about him or not? The second filter, is it good or bad? <coughs> what is backbiting? The Prophet ﷺ asked the Sahaba Ikram, Atadrunamal riba? Do you know what ghibat is? So the Sahaba Ikram said, Allah Rasul Alam. So he said, Dhikruka akhaka bima yakraw. Is your mentioning about your brother which he dislikes? Because what if the thing is in the brother, what I'm saying? Because in kana fihi ma taqul faqad ightabtahu. If it is in the brother, that's ghibat. Wa illam taqul fihi faqad bahattahu. And if it's not in him, then that's bohtan, that's slander, that's even worse. Nowadays we don't backbite, we slander people. <coughs> so this is the problem. So second thing is, before passing it on, let us see if it is good or not. If it's not good, my brother, my sister, stop it. We get so many messages. I got a message some years ago that this certain prominent scholar of Bangladesh, he passed away. So I looked at the message. I didn't take, think too much about it. Then message started coming one after the other. Someone phoned me, because Sheikh, did you hear that, you know, this fr he's a very close friend of yours and very big scholar of Bangladesh, he's passed away. I said, okay, have you found out? I said, no, no, I, I'll find out, don't worry about it. So I said, you know, worried about it? I go, no, no, uh, the thing is, you know, I'm doing some other things. I'll find out the social media, it might be wrong, it might be right. Because no, no, so many people have sent the message. I said, okay. So I phoned his uh, son-in-law, the Sheikh's son-in-law. I said, you know, uh, brother, I've heard that your father-in-law has passed away. No, Sheikh, no, he hasn't passed away. He's sitting next to me. <laughs> He's sitting next to me. I said, Subhanallah. So I said, okay, give the phone to the Sheikh. I, I, said, I said, Mashallah, you're a very fortunate person, very honored person. People don't even read the Quran, you know, even after a person passes away. Apkili isa le swab ho raha hai apki mein. It's so good. This is what's happening. So the Quran, abhi tis para wo ulama ikram, Quran ki tilawat ho rahi hai. Surah Yasin tilawat ho rahi hai. Allahu Akbar. What kind of people we become? No verification at all. But just pass it on. You know, in the COVID time, so many messages. In Bradford, they said, subhanAllah, there was this a clip going that there will be 6,000 Muslim dying. So they, you know, so somebody sent a clip. So they said this, the graveyard of Bradford will not be enough. So they're looking at graveyards in Oldham and Rochdale and all these areas to bury us. So they said, and then the other, another message came, you know, there'll be no place to bury you. So we're going to burn all the Muslims. So everybody sending Mufti Sahib, uh, can Muslim be burnt, cremated? So, yes, so Allah Ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. Look at how these messages just go forward without even any verification. So number one, what did I say? We need to make sure that there is the filter of truth. That we filter it out. Number one, truth. Number two, <coughs> is it good or not? If it's not good, if it's bad, don't go forward. That's why the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? The person who believes in Allah on the last day, let him be quiet. Let him say something good. If there's nothing good to say, be quiet. 
That's what the point. What did he say? Ma nadim tu ala sukuti abadan walakin nadim tu ala kalami mirara. I never ever regretted open keeping quiet. Like all my friends, we sat down together. Everybody were having a laugh, a talk, and I was silent. I never regretted on that. Oh, don't you know how to talk? Don't you talk? Why don't you talk? No, no, I didn't regret on that. But many times I regretted open blurting out things that I shouldn't have said. Walakin nadim tu ala sukuti ala kalami mirara. So the point here is, this is the second filter. The third filter, it might be true, it might be good, but is it beneficial? Is it going to give me reward? Like nowadays, we just, you know, phone each other, the son-in-law will phone, the mother-in-law, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, father they will phone, the daughter-in-law, or, you know, the daughter will phone the mother, and all these things, and what? Chit-chat, that's it, gossip. So, it might be true, it might be good, but is it beneficial? Is it giving you reward? Like every letter of the Quran, you really get 10 rewards. This chit chat. So is it beneficial for me in the akhirat? Why am I wasting my time? The Sahaba Ikram, Hassan Abbasid Rahmatullah says, Adraktu aqwaman kana ahaduhum ashaha ala umrihi minhu ala dirhami. I met this group of people, referring to the Sahaba Ikram, that each one of them, they were so possessive over the time, like you are possessive over your money. They would not give a minute out to you. I don't have no time. They, they valued that time. And we don't value it. That's why Imam Shafi Rahmatullah Alayhi, Subhanallah, he says, Sahib to Sufiya. I stayed in the company of the Sufis, of the spiritual saints. Then he says that if I want to narrow it down and summarize the synopsis of my staying with them, he was a pious person himself, but he's saying when I stayed with my shuyukh and my teachers and when the Masha'it, I could narrow it down, I could put it down, summarize it to two things. Number one, al to save. Time is a sword. Iqta'ahu wa illa qata'ah. You cut the time or the time will cut you. So we need to utilize and value every moment of our time. Secondly, an nafs Shagaltaha bil haq aw shagalatka bil batil. The second is our nafs. Either you control it, you use it for the right thing, or it will dictate you. So each and every one, we need to use the time in a beneficial way. So I was talking about the filter. So in our social media, we need to get this in our mind. What did I say? Number one, we need to make sure we have the right intention, noble intention to use it. Number two, start with Bismillah rahman rahim Number three is making sure that we have taqwa, the fear of Allah throughout our usage of our smartphones. If we sleep, number four is toba. Number five is don't exceed the limits. In everything, Islam teaches us moderation. <clears throat> There's no moderation in our life. When we sleep, we continue sleeping. Saturday, Sunday, you know, 12, 1 o'clock, then we'll wake up, we'll have a brunch. <laughs> you know, when we eat, we continue eating. When you're on social media, we continue. there's no discipline in our life. We have to make sure, you know, I always say, I was talking to my students, I said, like, three management we have to do. Time management, money management, food management. In all three, we utterly fail. All three. Time management, there's no time at all. We need to make sure that we have our five time prayers, the five divine appointments of Allah. We need to make sure that we have it on time. Inna salata kanat alal mu'mini the kitab But these times, we just move it around. Namaz time, no, no, I'm going shopping now. I'm eating now. I'm sleeping now. So time management is very important. The Prophet one of his dua was, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min shatatil amr. Allah, I ask refuge in you from being disorganized. We are very disorganized people. You know, we read the hadith, Ayatul Munafiqi Thalaf, Ida haqda thakadha wa ida wa'ada akhlafa wa ida'tu mina khana. That we promise people, okay, I'll meet you at 7 o'clock. You know, they say, is it English time or the Asian time? I say, brother, it's the Islamic time. It's the Islamic time. Now when I... When I Got in charge, uh, became in charge of the masjid. So the meetings I used to have, so I used to have it very quick because I had other programs to do. So I used to stay away after salah of the meeting. The meeting was to finish in 10 minutes. So people, so I finish, I'm going, uh, Mufti Sahib, you said there's a masjid meeting, it's finished. Didn't you say it's after Mazi? Yeah, it was after Namaz. Uh, did you come to Namaz? No, I just came for the meeting. Yes. Subhanallah. <laughs> this is our situation. Then I thought the meeting will last for one, two hours. It was life, time is short, brother. Life is short, I'm not going to waste my time in a meeting one, two hours. What do you think? 
you know, we go in a wedding, like now it is wedding season. Subhanallah, we'll sit down from 12 o'clock till 3, 4 o'clock for a plate of rice. <laughs> what kind of people are we? I went to one, you know, I have to perform a lot of nikahs, so I put this condition that 15 minutes for nikah, 15 minutes for eating. If you prolong it from there, I'm going. Because even that half an hour, that's two paras of the Quran you can read. I said, you know, we have to compare it in that way. So one reason when I went and the delay, I said, look, you know, brother, you know, I'm not going to perform it. I said, oh, sister, please, because then no food then. Because, no, we want both. I said, you're not going to have both. Either you have the nikah or not the, one of the two. I said, oh, Allah, we're stuck now. I said, don't worry, you know, son, I'll just take a date and go. Because we have to value time. So once in the winter time, I went to this nikah. I said, look, when you are ready, don't tell me 12 o'clock. When everybody's ready, you got the in the permission. You know, many weddings, I performed the nikah and the chat. Uh, brother, uh, you're the wali. Oh, Muthi, I forgot to take permission from my daughter. Oh, what? <laughs> That's supposed to have been done. Okay. Everything else will be said. So this is the problem. We don't know the basic things. So 12 o'clock, it starts. Everybody's sitting. I said, you know, it's winter. So I saw a few of my students sitting. I said, uh, in front of, you know, just water and salad and nothing else. The food is not here yet. I said, brother, have you read your Zohar? It's Asr time now. I came after Asr. I said, no, no, we've just been waiting for food. I said, for a plate of rice, you've been waiting three hours? What about your Zohar and Asr? Get up and read. He said, wow, what, what, what's this? I'm shouting even the wedding hall. I said, what? You know, namaz is more important. What are you doing? So this is the problem that we have. We need to understand time management. You know, our sisters, they will be adorning themselves, subhanAllah, adorning themselves up all day morning till just, you know, just for the next day wedding. And then subhanAllah, they will say, like sisters phone, Sister, can we read our, all our namaz at the end of the day? I said, why? Because no, we can't take off our makeup. You know, if you have wuzu, then we have to take all our makeup goes off. So isn't it permissible for that day? You know, just for the wedding day. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Look at the kind of thinking that we are doing. So time management and money management. So money management, they subhanAllah, I say, you know, we buy things with the money we don't have. The things we don't need to please the people we don't like. This is what we're doing in life. Buy one, get one free. This is the kind of mentality we have. Don't just buy it. Like this brother, you know, there was some milk on sale. So he bought so many milk bottles. I said, why? You don't need that much. Because now I'm going to freeze it all. I'm going to drink it within the next month. <laughs> I go, what kind of mentality we have? So money management, the Quran is talking about the Ibadur Rahman. It's very important. Nowadays we can't manage our money. I asked a 20 years old, you know, how is everything? Please do, I got so much debt. I got what debt? How much? Because 20,000 pounds. Because 20,000, you're 20 years old, 20,000 pounds, what do you? No, I got a car on finance, I did this, I did. What was the need for you to do that at the age of 20? That's what we need to make sure. Al iqtisadu fi nafaqati nisful ma'isha. Moderation in livelihood is half, and in, in, in expenditure is half of livelihood. So these are very important. Money management is very, very important. And the third thing is food management. What does the Quran say? In half a verse, it just you know, paints a picture of our diet. Eat and drink. Don't be extreme. So look at the beauty. And the Quran is saying, yeah, you are Rasulullah Kulum na toyibat. You know, toyibat, it means nutritious food. So every nutritious food is halal, but every halal food is not nutritious. Mm. Our pizzas, <laughs> our donut kebabs, our fish and chips, they might be halal, but they're not <laughs> nutritious. The Quran is saying, minat toyibat. Subhanallah. Look at the beauty of the Quran. So these food, they have effect on our body, in our minds. You know, the Quran is telling us, yeah, you are Rasulullah Kulum na toyibat wa amalu salia. Allah is addressing the messengers. Or oh, messengers eat from the nutritious, wholesome food and then carry out good deeds. The scholars, the correlation, the link between the two is if you have nutritious food, then you can carry out good deeds. Food has an effect. Always has an effect. That's when people invite me. I say, look, you know, make sure that if you invite me, don't bring fast food. Because that's going to just clog the mind and I'm going to be writing my book. I won't be able to write. Because I've seen it myself. That the day that I have food in someone's house, mashallah, pious person, mashallah, the sisters uh, read the Quran and did the dhikr when they made the food, that has an effect. 
And the house that you go and look this out today, you know, my wife is too tired or she was so busy, so it's the pizza today. <laughs> I don't know, brother. You know, I just have a glass of water, so I said, I'm going to be fasting. So this is the point what we, the food has an effect. So eat and so we need to make sure if we want to survive and we need to uh, meet these challenges, we need to make sure to stay away from depression is making sure that we have our things in place. Time management, food management, and money management. All these three things. And the social media I was talking about is very, very important that we manage that properly. If we mismanage it, then it's a loss for us and it jeopardizes our faith, our iman as well. It's very, very dangerous. So my brothers, what's the takeaway today? You might be taking takeaway food. No. Take away, what are you going to take with us today? <laughs> You know, son? We got Dr. Mahmoud Chandi, mashallah, will be speaking after me. But the point here is that what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves that this social media, am I going to be able to control myself when I'm using this social media? The etiquettes that I mentioned, you know, myself, yourself, can we utilize those etiquettes and adabs when we are using our social media? If we can't, we need to stop or we need to learn how to use it. We need to make sure, you know, like a lot of people used to uh, question that, you know, you talk about Imam Ali Rahmatullahi worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading Tahajjud uh, all night, he kept his wuzu from Isha till Fajr. We can't believe in this. So I said, brother, now you can. Because why? If you come with the fake pleasure, superficial pleasure on your mobile phone, on your Facebook and all these other apps, you can stay from Isha till Fajr without even realizing, without your eyes closing, these people had the true ishq true love. That's what Imam Shafi Rahmat Subhanahu these couplets come in my mind. He says, Sahari li tanqih al-uloom aladdu li min wasli ghaniyatin wa tibi inaqi. These are very like high class Arabic poetry which Imam Shafi Rahmat says that he says, Sahari, my staying awake at night time li tanqih al to look into the books and study my books, the knowledge, the sciences of Islam Aladhuli is more satisfying, it's more pleasurable for me mean wasli ghaniyatin than meeting a woman who is naturally beautiful. The word ghaniya in Arabic language comes for a woman without any makeup, she is very strikingly beautiful. That's what it means, wasli inaki and the fragrance that I'm going to get by hugging that woman. inaq. Subhanallah. These people, it's amazing. Then he continues, That my writing, that noise, that sound that makes when I'm writing with my pen is more better. Ahla wa aladhu min than people playing on the tambourines and the drums. Look at the subhanallah, the love they had. So let us utilize our time. Do you know our youngsters? Look, you know, we got so use the social media as I said in a positive way, study the books of the pious people. And read about the lives. Imam al Asr, Allama an Washa Kashim Rahmatullahi Alayhi. I will just finish on this point. You know, this just came in my mind. I thought, how this person, he was called the walking library. Qari Muhammad Tayyib Sabah Rahimahullah, Tala Hakim al Islam, the uh, principal of Dalum Deban, he says that if Allah forbid, if all the books of Dalum Deban, the library, was burnt down, then Allah Anwasha Kashmir Rahmatullah had the knowledge to write all these books again. Subhanallah. That's how much knowledge he had. He was called the walking library. He says that if I read something intently, I will remember this for the rest of my life. And if I just had a glance of it, I will remember it for 15 years. That was his photographic memory. So, but even then his study, his zeal and the enthusiasm for studying was just phenomenal. So once it happened, that he was very ill, so the news spread, like as I said, rumors. There's no filters, many, you know, all the time. So this rumor spread it that Allah Manwasha Kashmir has passed away. So Allah Shabir Ahmad Usmani Rahimullah Ta'ala Mufti Shafi Rahmatullah come running towards his room, towards his chamber. They come in and they see Hazrat sitting down, Dozanu, sitting down in front of the kitab with a dim light on and he's studying. So Allah Shabir Ahmad Usman, he was a bit free with him, he was about his same age. And he said, Hazrat, Allah ke waste ham par raham karo. Even though going to raham on yourself, hamari par raham karo. If, you know, we heard that you passed away. You know, if you left this world, what is going to happen to us? So Allah ke waste ham par raham karo. 
Is there any knowledge still left for you to study? And if there was, ham kaham argete. You could have, if there was any reference for to check, you could have called me or uh, you know, Mulvi Shafi and he would have checked it out. So he continued to listen without saying anything. At the end, when everybody finished talking, he said, Bhai, me kya karun? Ye to janam rog hai. This is the illness that I have. I always say, Allah give us that illness of studying. Do you know the word mutala? Those who understand Arabic, mutala is from mufa'ala. Do janib. It has to be both sided. So all the books that we have, everybody has books in their home, especially our students and scholars. We got so many. When was the last time we opened Bukhari Sharif and studied it? Or took a book out and tried to look and read it? So mutala is both sides. We need to take the kitab and look at it. The kitab are doing tulu, mutala ni horai. Tulu horai. Sulasi mujjara, sulasi mujitfini. Those who understand Arabic and the grammar, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Is that we're not studying. So each and every one of us, we need to utilize our time in productive things. It's very important. Every moment of our time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we need to make sure we value it. So what is the takeaway today? That the social media, we need to, we can use it, as I said, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill us or it can benefit us. It can take us to Jannah, it can take us to hell. And it's our choice. It's the way we use it. So let us use the social media in the right way, then we will see the benefits of it. And if you use it in the wrong way, we can't, we don't have control over it, then the cautious thing, the most, the best thing is that we don't use it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what has been said. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah. Written many books, inshallah, those books will be sold, inshallah, after the program and in the room to my right. So, inshallah, I can compile those books as well. Humble <coughs> request to sisters upstairs that, that alhamdulillah, we have uh, classrooms available for those uh, sisters and brothers who have got children, uh, the crash facilities as well, so they can move the children there into the rooms as well. So, in that way, inshallah, the children will not disturb the other sisters and the brothers who are listening to the program, inshallah. <coughs> I'd like to call upon one student of the class here, Mr. Farouk, Mr. Mohammed Sunil, come up and say goodbye. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملناها فأبين أن يحملناها وأشفقنا منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا ليعذب الله المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات ويتوب الله على المؤمنين والمؤمنات 
وكان الله غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلحكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاصبون صدق الله المولان العظيم Respected scholars, brothers, young and senior sisters, those present within the masjid, those listening at a distance through alternative means and devices, I greet you with the greetings of Islam. Hazrat Akdas Maulana Ibrahim Saab has delegated me the difficult task of attempting to speak about this idea of addiction. In reality, this is a topic for a medical doctor. And I am not a medical doctor. But I have still got 44 minutes to pass. Inshallah. So I'm just going to have to pretend to be a medical doctor. Inshallah. Brothers, it is not an issue of being a medical doctor or not a medical doctor because the Islamic literature is full of teachings that provide us clear guidance on understanding our physical body and understanding our psychological body. Today, the way knowledge <coughs> is presented it becomes a bit confusing, as though we're talking about a different thing. 
Let me give you an example. Please remember, I'm not a doctor. Let me give you an example. Is there any doctor, by the way, here? Yes, there. Yes. 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 Alhamdulillah, I'm supported now. <laughs> All of you against us too. <laughs> Any other doctor here? <laughs> All? Come on. Dr. Hamid, sitting on the chair. You please sit there on your seat. We will, we will ask for your uh, medical views, inshallah. As well. There is a field of medicine where we try to understand the brain what happens within the brain. And I've tried to explain it as simple as possible. Sometimes we call this neurology. Sometimes we have to understand our thinking processes, our behavior, our feeling, our emotions. And we call this psychology. Psyche and ology, the science of the mind. Ology means the science of something. Psyche is mind in the Greek and Latin. Sometimes we have to understand what's happening within our body from here to here. This is your physiology. This is medical terminology and mashallah, these doctors spend a lot of time to understand and appreciate this. But equally, the Quran talks about the body. Quran talks about the organs of the body. Quran talks about the mind. Quran talks about the understanding processes of the mind. Quran talks about your insight that should be part of your eyesight. We just have different words. The Quran says, They have no hearts by which they understand. The Quran is saying the heart is a mechanism besides your physical function to beat. And if it doesn't beat, that's it, the end. But there is another intellectual process of deep thinking that happens there. The Quran is saying this. And we all believe Quran is absolute truth. Medical science, as Dr. Saab, both doctors will say, it can be speculative until you have the data to prove this. It's an opinion. So the Quran is saying the heart is part of your thinking process. Your nafs, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi, was one of the first to talk about yourself. And Western science talked about Sigmund Freud and his theories afterwards of how you feel you want this and you want this now, which we call immediate gratification. If you have young kids in the house and you will see their behavior, just sit and observe. They want something, they want it now. Otherwise, there will be a tantrum. And sometimes adults behave like that as well. They want this, they want it now. And they will do anything to come to that stage. And that's the final stage which we call addiction. Addiction is a final stage. Before you just experiment. Let me taste this, let me taste this. Like we're sitting on our dinner table, our dastakhan. Bit of this, bit of this, bit of this. Sometimes they, you're with your peers, your friends, let me taste this thing. Then slowly you begin to get into a habit. The habit develops because that enjoyment you had first time round, you no longer have that same enjoyment until you have two or three of the same thing. Because your body's used to it. Just like Dr. Saab would say, if your body gets used to antibiotics, then Dr. Saab would say, okay, do this, do this, do this, because your body's already used to it. The impact is no longer there. So you want more and more and more of the same thing, so you become regular usage. Then the regular usage of this thing becomes high risk. That you, you're so used to these things now, that you, your behavior whilst you do alcohol or drugs or anything, now becomes risk for other people's lives. And then you become addicted to it. It's phases. It's phases. We have to think, how do you get to that stage? Why, why does a person get to that stage? This is just an example I give you, and medical science is very important in Islam. That's why hospitals were developed. 
and the Muslim attention, a lot of the charity works, mashallah, the brothers are doing is hospital development. Not just our spiritual doctors looked after the ruh, the soul. Ulama, Mawlanas, Muftis, Mashaikh, etc. The doctors looked after the physical body. And both were part of one. Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah was an expert on physical body as well. He was a doctor as we understand nowadays. He was also a spiritual doctor, a great Sufi. So the addiction that we're looking at, it's, it's phases. Whether it's drugs or whatever, but one of the greatest addictions that's developing now is not substance abuse. It's not alcoholism. It is not necessarily naughty behavior on the computer or on your phone. Hmm. I'm in a masjid, I'm going to be careful with my choice of words. I'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> But there is something else happening, brothers, in the modern day and age. We're living in the 21st century. Let's not forget this. This is affecting me, you, everybody here, whether you've got white hair on your beards, or you've got black hair on your beards, or you've got just for men on your beards. <laughs> it's affecting everybody. Man, woman, and child. And this is the phenomenon of technology companies. Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, all these companies, they're having big time <coughs> impact on our lives. Who's not heard of Amazon? Hmm? Young people here are ordering things and the older people are going to the door to open and receive those things. <laughs> Say back their own. Yeah. Apple, who's not heard of Apple? We're talking about Apple and oranges, Apple the company. <laughs> who's not heard of Facebook and soon to be Metaverse? Who's not heard of Oculus? Who's not heard of Microsoft? This is impacting our lives. And this technological revolution is producing gains. And the gaming industry, brothers, is the biggest growth area at the moment. And that growth area is worth 200 billion US dollars. 200 billion. It's about 170 odd billion pounds. Three billion people in the world. There's about 8 billion nearly in the world. Three billion people in the world are playing games, gaming. Whether they are playing on their co gaming consoles with a screen in front or on the TV or whether they are playing on the phone, they're playing games. This is such an international phenomenon that there are big prizes available. Some people have left their jobs and this is their job to win the prizes. Ask these young kids who are sat here. I guarantee you they will know more than the adults here. And I'm going to bring them in in a minute. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to ask them questions. Ninety-five percent of the people play, who games play on the phone. Every time I go somewhere, I ask the, the young kids, which phone do you have? Every single time they have a better phone than me. <laughs> Every single time. And I'm thinking, why does this kid need this phone? The latest iPhone 12 or 13 or whatever it is, the resolutions, the pixels, the graphics, the data, everything. Gaming. This problem of addiction to game is so big, that just to give you a few ideas of what's going on in the world, United Nations put this gaming as a disease as part of 2021 list of diseases. The World Health Authority, I may have got the year wrong, World Health Authority is the WHO basically, and you heard a lot about the WHO when the 
pandemic was about. <coughs> the who, whether you like it or not, it is a source of reference as these doctors. It has acknowledged there to be impulse disorder. Impulse means josh, jazba. You cannot control your jazba, your josh, your impulse. And the part of the addiction bit that people get into you is your limbic brain, limbic system. Limbic system, limbic system which controls your emotions of the brain. And every time you get a little, this is affecting this. So you cannot use this thing which Quran says, which Urdu says, which Persian says, which Gujarati says is aqal. Aqal comes from aqal yaqilu to fasten up and tie up. If you do not fasten it up, it's going to go astray. It's going to go dal. It's going to go off, off, off the road, off track. So this aqal needs to be tied up. That's what Allah Rabbul mean made the human being the crown of creation is aqal. So we need to understand the impact all these addictions are having on this part. Then the other part is your front lobe, front, frontal, frontal lobe, where you have other important things happening. Quran talks about all of this. Afala ta'kilun, where does the word ta'kilun come from? We fail to understand biology is there, geography is there, physiology is there, psychology is there, everything is there within the Quran and Hadith. <laughs> to understand the impact of our actions, Hazrat Mawlana was talking about food and reaction of food on our spirituality. The idea of pleasure, pleasure, having fun, having pleasure. Who doesn't want it? Let's be honest. We cannot have pleasure in Islam the way we want to have pleasure. Let me give you an example. Eid al Adha is coming, right? On Eid al Adha, we all want to have pleasure and fun. But we cannot have the pleasure and fun the way we want to have it because Allah says, Prophet explained, when you wake up, first and foremost, go to the masjid and pray salah. Whether we liked a person or we did not like a person, the janazah salat will be done and we will all follow the janazah. We will not be controlled by our emotions. Islam is taught us. Our emotions are to be controlled. When we lose that part of control, addiction is all about losing control. You just simply don't have control over things. And when it comes to the gaming industry, you ask or watch your children, watch even adults, <coughs> how much time is being spent. China, I was telling you, China put a law in place where kids could not play games during school week, school time. Law. And at the weekend, only one hour. Chinese are intelligent individuals, they have studied these things, the impact it has on individuals. Because if you're going to lose this generation, and I'll explain to you how your generation is lost, you've lost the future. Sorry. And that, <coughs> the mothers upstairs, the sisters upstairs, will tell you when food is ready, you call the children to food, they don't bother coming. <coughs> you text them, you ring them, what do you have to do? A video call with them to come and eat? Because they're so glued on to the gaming. Secondly, let me give you an example. In one part of England, there was a case where this young man was coming on a Saturday morning, no school, no madrasa, no nothing, 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, sat on one chair in front of the gate. And in places, the whole room will be kitted out, so it give it a bit of a studio feeling, an absolute reality feeling. The seat is proper, the pedals are proper, everything is proper. And parents can't say anything. And the mother is so concerned that my child is not eating, she actually comes to feed, this is a 12-year-old kid, comes to feed the child as though the child is one or two-year-old. 
And in some places, adults are playing the game to the extent coming at home after work, sitting in front, not eating, not saying any, giving any attention to uh, the good lady in the house, the wife, and just playing, 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 playing. This has led to divorces. Is it? These companies are worth, these four or five companies are worth more than four trillion US dollars. It's more than the economy of India. Okay? And these are owned by a few people. I don't have a problem with any of the companies. We need to understand the impact of the things of how we use it. Sometimes addiction is not for substance abuse or a drug or any naughty behavior. Sometimes it's emailing. People are just addicted to email. There's no cutoff point. Or sometimes it's just you watching the masjid. Sometimes. Juma khutbah will be going on and the best person with the best view in Juma khutbah is the Imam Sahib. Because he sees everybody. And there will be people there in the back row who will be scrolling. They're not really looking at anything because they're addicted to scrolling. Sometimes addicted to just YouTubing. They're not watching YouTube but they're just scrolling. It's just addiction to this thing. How it be controlling our lives. So what the Chinese did, one hour only at weekend. Mm. And those who are on problems, how did they get them off the problem? They got them off the problem using different types of therapies. Either you go and speak to our doctor, sir. He recognizes the issue here. And say, okay, you need counseling. This is a mental health issue now. And you will see in the younger generation, the, and those who are teaching in madrasas, those who are teaching in schools, you will see attention span is very limited. Yes, Sorry. <coughs> Concentration is very limited. Yes, a 45 minute bayan is too long. Too long. I say that myself. I've spent all my 40 years in a classroom. I see that, I can see this. That's why when you're taught how to be a teacher nowadays, as part of teacher training, you are taught how to break the classroom's boredom up. Sorry. Teach a little bit, have an exercise, have a discussion, do a bit of craning and whatever, give some homework, whatever, give, and give a break. Sorry. Hmm? Attention span is what? Impact. So as part of a new games are coming out all the time, Young man, who's heard of the game Fortnite? Sab has heard. Abhi the mene shole film ka naam nahi liya. Fortnite, Roblox, uh, kya hai? Call of Duty. The problem is not playing the game or how long. What is that game teaching you? The psychology behind that game sometimes is, I want to be the best. Quran is saying, al hakumut takasu Mutual rivalry has deluded you, put you off track. The Quran is saying in the ayat that I recited from Sunni Munafiqun, Ya Ayyazina Amanu, La Tulhikum. Do not let your wealth and children lead you astray from the remembrance of Allah. Game is, is happening here Game, one after game, one after game. And this addiction, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. And sometimes these games are about survival. Who can survive and how do you survive? By getting rid of other people. That creates a mentality. And there is, Salat is going. Tarabi is going. Have you ever wondered why in Ramadan month, our Elderly Buzruks, mashallah, are happy to perform Salatu Tarawih 20 rakats. No problem. And if they've ever missed two rakats or four rakats, yeah, Rajan, the bear rakat shooting. Say? 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 And our young people are saying, oh, eight is enough. <laughs> why is eight enough? Because he says it's enough. Who's, why, why is he saying? Because his, his next door neighbor is saying he's enough. The young man who, by the way, is going to the gym and lifting all these weights up, 
He's getting tired after eight rakats, and our Buzruk, mashallah, <coughs> who's just about coming to the masjid with a walking stick, is performing 20 rakats. <laughs> Something wrong somewhere. Why is our Buzruk able to stand for one hour with full attention, and our young man can't start for eight rakats? I'm not a mufti, I'm not going to explain whether it's a rakat or 20 rakat, as mufti sahab. But brothers, we need to think what's happening. This, the games, <coughs> one game after another game after another game, and the next level, and, oh, what is it called? A uh, loot case. In the game, so everybody's pretending now not to know anything. <laughs> As part of the game is you have a treasure re or a treasure box, that in that box are some other goodies that takes you to the next level. But to buy those goodies, you need money. And that money needs to come from Papa or Mummy. <laughs> so get to the next level, then the next level, then the next level. Allahu Akbar. Why is this? Because that person is looking for something and they're looking for happiness. That's why they want to do it again and again. So somebody is on cocaine, they want more, they want more, they want more, looking for happiness. And as part of the chemical reaction, and both Dr. Saad, mashallah, will explain to you, this is what is known as dopamine. Dopamine. Dopamine, by the way, is not the Gujarati dopo. <laughs> <laughs> dopamine is that agent that kick-starts your whole, do you remember the old cars when you had to pull the chalk? Hmm? You had to pull the chalk. Then everything kicks into place. Dopamine is that thing that kicks into place and chemical re chain reaction that makes you feel happy. So Allah in, your, in yourself has got encaphaline, endorphin, dopamine, mashallah, will make you feel happy. And these substance abuse are one to kickstart this. You know, people want to feel happy. Why, 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 why do people say, I'm on a high, he's on a high? The Quran is saying the only high that will give you real satisfaction is Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'in Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Only with the remembrance of Allah will your hearts become tranquil and satisfied. When we keep fasting, we feel nice here. When we finish the Qur'an in Salatul Taraweeh after 20 rakats without missing anything, you feel nice here. Whether you understood it or did not understand it, you know you've achieved something. But that's the impact of the Holy Qur'an. That is Zikrullah. And it is Zikrullah which is actually going to give you real satisfaction. And those people who are addicted to real satisfaction, Qur'an, Durush Sharif, Salat, they know what real addiction is. Because they are connected with Allah. They are connected with Rasul alayhi salatu was salam. That is real addiction. As Hazrat Mawlana gave you the example as the Shah Anwar Kashmiri sahab rahmatullahi alayhi. Shah Anwar Kashmiri was addicted to his books. I personally saw Hazrat day in, day out, alhamdulillah, night and day, he was addicted to books. He ran a Darul Uloom, or many Darul Ulooms. But also he did not waste time, he was addicted to books. And he had a book in the library, a book at home, book for his classes, everything, alhamdulillah. Allah. Likewise, Mufti Shabir Sam. These are Buzruks that I've seen with my own eyes. Work this way. Allah. I can guarantee you here, I will ask the younger people, when was the last time they read a full book? A full book. Then are, are, we, are we wondering why we don't get grade nines or A, A, A stars in A levels and GCSEs? So the gaming industry, brothers, three billion people are hooked onto it, and by 2030, it's just six, eight, seven, eight years down the line, not far, <coughs> there will be four and a half billion people hooked onto gaming. So if you want to do a business, it's going to be gaming. The biggest growth area and the biggest degree development you will see over the next decade, I would believe, and I've spent time in a university, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? All of us are impacted. 
every one of us sat here. You're going on your phone and you're looking for a ticket for Umrah. You're looking for a ticket, ticket to Baitul Maqdis. Or are you looking to buy something, a good pair of slippers for your Umrah trip? All the sites that you are visiting, somebody has prepared this algorithm which is going to work out your pattern of behavior. Next time you visit, they're going to send you adverts. That's called data science. People's behavior, data. This is the big thing that's going to happen in this world that is changing and changing very rapidly, brothers. We need to be very sure where is the end game. And the end game is front of Allah. 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 Till your Lord is your final destination. And in that, it, we can become very, very confused. Confused in the state of Dajjal. Dajjal from where the Dajjal word comes from. Dajjal means Haq, Batil, Truth, Falsehood becomes absolutely mixed together. And it's difficult to distinguish what is good and what is bad. Hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا يَكُونُ الْمَعْرُوفُ مُنْكَرَ وَالْمُنْكَرُ مَعْرُوفَ Good becomes bad, bad becomes good. I don't need to give you examples in this modern day and age where good becomes bad and bad becomes good. The companions were saying, whoa, no way, no way, no way, no way. I say, ذَلِكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ is this going to happen, Ya Rasulullah? Is this going to happen? Good becomes bad and bad becomes good. Ma'roof becomes munkar and munkar becomes ma'roof. Allahu Akbar, is this going to happen? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Qala bal ashaddu min zalim. More severe than this. The companions were already surprised. So what's going to happen? Ya'muru nas bil munkar wa yanhawna anil ma'roof. People will command to do bad munkar and will stop from doing good ma'roof. Look at the world around you. Look at the Quran, look at the Hadith. This is why Quran says, فَأَتَبِرُوا يَا أُولِي الْأَبْصَارِ Seek Ibra. Ibra means when you go to school and the head teacher tells you a story, the head teacher will say, what is the motto of this story? Correct? Hmm? The motto is Ibra. It's the wisdom, the hikmah. Behind this. That's Ibrah. Fa'atabiru. Seek wisdom. Ya ulil absar. O people of insight. Insight when you've got deep knowledge about something. That is the Muslim. Because the Quran has opened up his or her eyes. He or she is now looking at the world in a different way and understanding. What is going to take me away from my duty as a believer to my creator? This is what matters. And anything that there is too much, Quran openly says, in al-hayatul dunya, la'ibun wa lahwun. In some places, lahwun wa la'ibun. That it's pleasure and pastime. That's how life has been described. Pleasure and pastime. More and more and more you will see games coming out which are more pleasure and pastime. Pleasure and pastime. <coughs> People are spending hours on end on these games. I'm not just talking about the kids, by the way. Let me give you examples of pleasure and pastime of adults. Netflix. How many times is a whole series there? So people will go to Netflix, no advertisements. One person is paying, ten people are watching. <laughs> oh, did I say something I wasn't supposed to say? <laughs> oh dear. One episode after another episode, after another episode, after another episode. So the children are saying, I'm playing three hours games. My mummy is watching drama on Netflix. And daddy is watching Shah Rukh Khan <laughs> for three hours. What's the difference? Three hours on games or three hours on drama? And the other series, what do you say? Urdugal. Episode after episode after episode after episode. Is it five series? 
One episode is 45 minutes. I sat down one day and added up all the episodes and all the time. And you put all that time together. In this amount of time, a person can become a hafiz. Allah. We're struggling to read one juz a day, one para a day, yet we have time to listen to all the dialogues and the sing song and the shaky shaky of Shah Rukh Khan and Amitabh Bachchan, etc. I don't know any female actor's name, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but yet we are struggling to read one juz. Why? Something is not right here. Our sense of control, this is why in Islam, to bring back the sense of control, Hazrat Qari Tayyab Saab, Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasiya. Explained in his work, Anasire Arba, the four elements. Abu Atish Khakobat, earth, water, wind, and fire, that make up the human structure. That one of the wisdoms of the fast is to bring back control in your life. Ask Dr. Sab, when you, you somebody's overweight, Dr. Sab will control your weight. Eat small portions. I think we're all guilty of that. <laughs> Eat small portions. How can we have small portions when the mashallah there's a roast leg of lamb in front of us? <laughs> Fasting, psalm, rosa is telling you, training you how to control yourself. The food is in front of you. Maulana Sahib will be doing dua, will be crying his eyes out, there's two minutes left for iftar. Hajur is in front of you, Zamzam is in front of you, but dare anybody have anything. We've been fasting for nearly 18, 17 hours. Dare anybody have anything? Anybody has something, he's added. That is control. Anybody's outside by themselves, fasting, they won't eat. So any, any type of food, won't eat. Control. Islam has taught us in our ibadat, control. In our salat, every salat is linked with time. That is disciplining our time. In basic things within Islam, Allah has provided a lifestyle. There is no harm. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam in hadith, Hazrat Mufti Sahib and Mawlana teach, mashallah, big, big books. They will tell you <coughs> that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasalam sometimes used to race with Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. They used to be wrestling. On one hadith, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam was wrestling with an individual of the Quraysh who thought he was the heavyweight champ. <laughs> so sometimes in moderation, and our uh, Islam is about moderation, sometimes we go from playing the game once or twice, and we're hooked. Then it goes through the stages of trying, and why does this happen? 